Hey, Moo has extended their offer on the cards through June 30th. I hope you're going to forgive me an old man's music, but I'm going to reminisce for a little bit. Back in the 1970s, Macon was where it was happening in music. It was the home of Southern rock. Right now, the way Capricorn and the way Macon is, it's very laid back. Nashville, unfortunately, became too commercialized. Macon's just a one big family, man, and you know, everybody that makes music is family. We all know each other, you know. July 4th of 1970, there was something here called the Atlanta Pop Festival. Well, it wasn't really in Atlanta, it was in Macon. Jimi Hendrix, Allman Brothers, Jethro Tull, Grand Funk Railroad, Richie Havens, John Sebastian, B.B. King, Mountain, Blood Rock. It was like a Georgia Woodstock. In 1970, I was 15 years old and was about to start work at WNEX. I had already been fired from my first job in radio, but was about to go to the rock station here. One of my regular shifts in high school was uh, on Sunday afternoon, and I would always announce the Capricorn bands that were playing at Central City Park. It was absolutely amazing. Beyond Beyond our wildest dreams, and all because of Phil Walden and all the people at Capricorn Records. A lot of people don't know this, but Jimi Hendrix spent his summers in Macon. He and Johnny Jenkins were the perfect match. Everybody here calls it the Byron Pop Festival, because that's really where it was. Byron is a big peach orchard just a little bit south of Macon. But when the Atlanta Pop Festival was held, Jimi Hendrix opened it. There must be some kind of way out of here. You go to the concert, and then afterwards, everybody would get in the car and go to the Mellow Mushroom and get a pizza. Did I just say the Mellow Mushroom? I had Mellow Mushroom pizza today. They've opened another Mellow Mushroom in Macon. And guess who I found? Mill Trash. You're about to meet a legend. Um, now, for years, I've heard about this guy named Mill Trash. My friend Adam's friend. And, and there he is, right there. This is Wait, awesome. <laughs> How did you get the name Mill Trash? Um, when he was in seventh grade, he apparently didn't really care about himself, so they called him. They said he looked like a guy that was behind a mill picking up trash, so they called him Mill Trash. You look fine now. That was the nickname of a friend of a friend of one of mine's in high school, and I really kind of thought they made the guy and the name up, and he really exists. So, is there anything you want to say to Adam while, while you got him? <laughs> on the, the, Adam, it's been a long time. Video yes, up. video update. <laughs> Missed those days. Has he borrowed anything from you that he hasn't returned? <laughs> no, he is not. <laughs> we did have an egg come through our window last night, if that brings back any, any memories of anything. I believe that's a drug reference. Throughout the 70s, Macon, Georgia was kind of like a little mini Nashville. Capricorn offices and Capricorn studios were in two entirely different places. People would always go to the offices thinking that they were the studio. You'd see kids holding guitar cases that had gotten to Macon, trying to make a name for themselves, trying to play music somewhere, to be discovered. And consequently, they would always go here. Yeah, I know. This is Hitmaker Magazine and I'm on the cover. And here we are. It says Capricorn Records, but these were the offices. The truth, the studios were hidden and it actually looked like an abandoned electronics store. There would be a door in the very back of the offices and you open that up and suddenly you're in a state-of-the-art recording studio. So really let me thank you for letting this old man kind of vent about some great days that I have in my memory. And maybe by putting this video up, some of my family when I'm long gone will be able to come back to YouTube. <laughs> like, like it'll be here. <laughs> Oh, God, that was rich.